everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So today, this morning, I am working on a couple projects. So in the process of, you know, using up books, I've been going through a lot of books. I've been making a lot of ephemera um, using birds and um, going through kind of old bird books. So I have all of these black and white illustrations of bird heads. And I'm a huge fan of anthropomorphic, um, things like <laughs> objects, animals, whatever, to be kind of characterized to look like people. So the cool thing is, is I'm taking part in, um, for October dailies today, um, I'm working away on them. I'll actually share my progress too with you, um, on the others, but today I'm on day eight, which is anthropomorphic which is perfect. So maybe I will catch you up on my October dailies before I get started on that. Um, let me just grab them. Hold on two seconds. Okay, we're back. So um, welcome to my mess. <laughs> so I will just kind of go through um, what each of these are. So I'll just go out of order because it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm taking part in two October dailies, as you know, if you've been following along. So this one is from actually, was it yesterday? Yes. Um, if you could fly on something, what would it be? So I did this collage. I chose a magpie because they're like, um, they're collectors, they're, <laughs> they're cheeky, um, and they just really appeal to me and I feel like they're kind of like my own personality a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, I really, I really like this one. Um, and then the prior day, um, was to create your own poem centered around the title Black Rose. And so I just took a piece of vintage book page, added some, um, roses and I kind of inked them up. And the poem that I wrote is Black Rose, only picked once, prick a finger, odd occurrence. Leaves fall, red blood droplets in water, may she learn from this, curious daughter. So it's kind of a tale of like, you know, how you could prick your finger on a rose. It it honestly is inspired a little bit by my own um, experiences with my, my four-year-old daughter, teaching her about foraging and teaching her all of the ways of, you know, not, um, not putting things like poisonous mushrooms in her mouth and, you know, just, I guess, the, the lore of nature. Um, then this one is from Mab Graves' Drawloween, um, and this was for day six, so this is Salamander. So I was inspired to depict, and I drew, uh, the salamander, the two-headed salamander that was born in, um, Israel, I believe, and I just kind of depicted it with these letters that I cut out, um, to look sort of like a softer version of those, like VHS tape boxes from the 80s and then the background is actually a Japanese kind of landscape I just wanted it to be kind of like one of those old movies like you know like the ones that are themed around like bugs or different kinds of reptiles that like attack a city and so I had a lot of fun with this one I really enjoyed it and this one is back to Pink Oddbirds October Daily, and um, it's from day five, and it's the monster from your worst nightmare coming to life. What is it? What does it look like? So this one is very simple to me, but also very meaningful. <laughs> so most nights, honestly, the way that I kind of fall asleep after I've like turned off everything is I just kind of think honestly about creative stuff that I want to do, you know, creative stuff that I'm working on. I sometimes like imagine in my head myself, like flipping through the pages of a journal or like making a journal. It's, it's actually quite relaxing to fall asleep that way. Um, but my nightmares, I would say, or my bad dreams, my bad thoughts that I have sometimes at night often revolve around that same thing, which is like, bad things happening in the studio, having too much of a horde around me, feeling too cluttered, um, like, you know, books toppling over, things going wrong, not getting enough time to work on the things I want to get to work on. So this is just a little vintage book page that I inked up, put this little face, this little sort of grumpy, troubled face and it's really representative of just kind of like my worst nightmare was just like when things just like really go wrong creatively um I mean obviously that's not my life's worst nightmare there's 
you know people to think about in, in that regard but um yeah I wanted to keep it a little bit lighter and so that is who I chose to depict okay then this one <laughs> um this one is the Mab Straloween Club again um and it is from um cryptid day five cryptid so this is um a flamingo cart which is the cryptid if you don't know what a cryptid is it's it's basically a creature who um, is only rumored to exist but it's never been proven so this character design this image is actually from um, a Graham base book called mixed beasts where he blends kind of like different animals together so when I thought about the flamingo cart, it made me think about pink flamingos and the movie and Divine. And then the whole thing just kind of came together in my head. So I just created this kind of dark sky collage, some houses that remind me of Baltimore row houses in the background because Divine is, you know, from Baltimore and part of the whole Dreamlanders and John Waters iconic um, Baltimore film crew who really pushed the limits of filmmaking in um, the 60s, 70s. So... Then I just added a couple of bits of words, which I think always kind of make things a little more complex. And it's the song of a bird, the dead heart. And so it kind of, it creates a narrative there for you. And then this one, we pop back over to Pink Odd Birds October Dailies. And this was to depict our own enchanted amulet. So this one, um, I actually made it with paper mache. So it's, um, hopefully you can see it has like a, a texture to it. It's got movement. I painted it in a Caucasian sort of skin tone. And to me, the human eye is like the amulet of the body. And it's the most enchanting thing I think that we that we're built with. It's the most interesting looking, it's the most complex. And so I used a carnelian stone actually as the eye. I painted the pupil on, sculpted the the eye itself, gave a little bit of a of a, you know, a bat wing eye there and some mermaid um inking up top to just kind of create an overall look. And yeah, I'm happy with this one and I also really love the feel of it. I paper mache it with vintage book page. And then this actually is totally unrelated, but I'll show it to you as well. This is kind of like a weekly wrap up, I guess, today. So, because it's been like a little while since I've done one of those. So um, this is actually from Ann Brooks, 52 Tags Handmade Challenge. This is week number 40, and it's something yummy. So use something yummy in your stash that you've kind of been hoarding. So for me, I do sculptural wet felting um, when I have time to from time to time in my um, cluster of different hobbies that I have so this I hoard which is my well my wet felted kind of um, base like felt fabric that before you start to agitate it and get it you know sculpted this is the the layers of the fine felt that you've gently felted into these sheets to work with and then um i wanted it to be kind of like a fall color kind of scene so i had some silk here that i'd felted on the back of and um, this is some iridescent silk that i've been hoarding and added those in and stitched around them to create kind of leaves and then i had this um broken fire opal necklace and it just to really fit the color profile and I thought it would be a nice top for the tag so it's quite a fancy schmancy kind of tag but I'm really happy with it and I'm happy to add it to the 52 tags collection that I've been creating and then this is actually going back to Mab's Draloween and this was day four night circus so um on back is red construction paper and vintage book page to create kind of those circus stripes that are just iconic to looking at a circus and then to make it more of a night circus I thought about the concept of like you know vintage kind of freaks and that sort of thing and I had the Graham base mixed beasts book and I thought like how fun to kind of take that concept of like animals in the circus and like freaks in the circus both of which I would say I'm not completely comfortable with either I'm, I'm not really a fan of circuses to, to be honest but um 
yeah, I just wanted to put it together in a way that was innocent and fun, and that's what I did. I, I collaged using some of the mixed beasts from Graham's book. This is, I, I forget all their names. They all have like very brilliant names. So this is like an octopus cat with a violin. This is a bird peanut. Um, this is like a kangaroo rooster, kangaroo rooster, I guess, with a little baby in its pocket there. So cute. And this is like a little bird in a popcorn bag, and I just thought that they were all so charming. So and then in back here there's more of the white and red that's actually from a totally different just piece of random paper I had that was like a red and white curtain um and then this one is the last one that is finished and this is also from Mab's Halloween and it was day seven werewolf so I did some collaging from vintage books with this one um this is my werewolf and then I added some words to just kind of give it some narrative so we have the moon up here and we have this like skeleton of a bird down here and kind of like a astrological stuff going on in the background and it says the man in the moon lost no time wind the clock the last light from the sun because we know that werewolves are you know responding to daylight and moonlight just like you know vampires do so yeah that's my little collection of October dailies um and that's what I'm going to work on today also. I, I just wanted to share one more thing with you, which is like kind of my um, my haul from this week, um, this book, Hot Textiles. So this is a really cool book. Um, Inspiration and Techniques with Heat Tools by Kim Thittichai. And it's got a lot of really neat ideas that kind of blend the use um, of like textile materials and um, materials that are not your typical you know kinds of materials but there's a lot of great ideas in here that I'm really looking forward to bringing to my journals and my ephemera making and um, just my art in general so there's a lot to be learned in here so um, expect something coming up from me about hot textiles because it will be coming Um, other than that, I can show you one more thing before I get into making. I'll show you my contributions to my ephemera box from this week because I've been working away in the background. I haven't just been slacking, I promise. So I've been making journal cards with and tags with vintage bird um, stuff. And I've been using my scraps from my scrap bin and just trying to use them up. And I'm really happy with how all of these tags have turned out. Um, so I now have a whole collection of um, bird themed beautiful tags to use in journals and you know birds fit into I would say almost any theme uh, this one is fabric backed and uh, has a butterfly there and then I also was using up some vintage book pages from an old I believe Ooh, I want to say Grimm's Fairy Tale, The Wild Swans book, maybe that had some other stories in it too. And I've just been making journal cards with um, the black and white images. And then I've also just saved a few of the papers from the book where the back is already blank and it's just a nice little thin tuck in for a journal. And they're old, you know, black and white lithograph kind of. And this one I really liked, The Darning Needle. I thought it's a nice little story and it would go really nicely inside a like a sewing journal um, what else have I done so then I used um, this is another of the grand base images this is the tree frog <laughs> and I put some words on there lovely world of trees and flowers um, more birds so this is like a really effective way of using up scraps and just making beautiful things And I really just enjoy collaging so much, especially using like random materials and like focal points that just really work out nicely. So all sorts of these. Some of these I made, I think in one of my last videos. Um, so you might've seen a few of them, but I just kind of wanted to go through and show you. So yeah, that's where we are with those. So lots of ephemera being made here between the um, October dailies and this use it up kind of personal challenge that I'm on. Um, 
I saw this morning, I was watching videos and I saw that um, Nat Williams was doing this, she's doing this like idea where, you know, a lot of junk journalers will do book hauls, like the books that we thrift to, to make journals with. And she recommended using like a Friday book haul um, hashtag, which I might do. I certainly won't have books every Friday, but that's kind of the idea. Like her idea is, you know, it, there's enough of us out there that, you know, we thrift for books. So um, it would be kind of cool, like every Friday to post your video because then there'd always be something for, you know, to watch on a Friday. Like if you enjoy watching book hauls and we could find some new, um, you know, YouTubers to follow. And... Um, yeah, so I watched that this morning, and I think I might participate a little bit in that. I also watched Nick the Booksmith's new, the first in her new series of Craft and Crime, and I really like that idea. I think it's really good for her. I think she's a very good voice for that. Um, it got me thinking about how I used to have, like, a podcast... I've actually had several podcasts in the past, but I do this thing, unfortunately, that in the in the industry is called pod fading, which is like you get through a few episodes and then something happens and you just don't make them anymore. And for me, it's been, I mean, a lot of things, a lot of it to do with like pregnancies and having children and no longer having the time. Like my latest podcast is called I'll Teach You Something and I do it with my husband. And we've kind of pod faded, but with the plan to return to that one. Um, I'm really hoping we get a chance to soon because I really enjoy doing it with him. Like, and I, I, I think it's nice to have um, something that we can just casually do. We have a lot of fun. Um, I usually link to it in my, my show notes every day. Sorry, not my show notes. I'm talking podcast lingo now, but in the YouTube description, I always link to the podcast because um, it, it's there. It's on everywhere you go to find podcasts and I will come back to it. I know I will. Um, prior to that, I used to do a podcast called Ollie Ollie Oxen Free that was about missing people. Um, I sort of, I still kind of want to go back to that, but I think with a slightly different format, um, I've been thinking about it like a little bit. I, I sort of thought about it when I watched Nick's video this morning, like, could I bring attention to missing people and do a little series of my own that's similar to that that's about like you know missing people but maybe I'll just sit and like work on stuff while I'm talking about the story and then I'll you know share pictures and clips as um as I can to you know bring attention to these stories it's, it's a very careful topic I actually dug in quite deep because um I interviewed families of missing people. I um, I was focusing a little bit on Canadian cases and Indigenous people and um, people of color that typically get a lot less coverage in the media than um, Caucasian people do. So yeah, it, it, it's like a very heavy topic, but you actually have to be really careful when you're covering um, missing people stories because sometimes it's actually there's a lot more going on than what you really know sometimes family um, are implicated in the disappearance so you got to be careful about that sometimes family don't want the attention to to you know especially if it's an old case um, families may not want to have the attention anymore they may feel that they have already reached the conclusion that their loved one is gone and they don't want to keep reliving the story um, sometimes certain people their methods both in true crime and in missing persons coverage can be uh, very disruptive to police um, or, or other people that are professionally hired to investigate these things or the family investigating or or trying to work with you know maybe a hostage situation a lot of things go on and, and that's the thing I think is really important for people who consider themselves a part of like a true crime or a missing persons community online like there's a lot of it on reddit um, there's a lot of kind of groups that really take to trying to find missing people which I think is you know it's admirable but sometimes can get a little obsessive and a little out of hand and a little bit um, tone deaf when you're not listening to families and and 
yeah, you, you just got to be really careful. So that one's left me feeling a little on the fence. I didn't have a bad experience with it. I actually had a great experience. I um, was able to talk to many families. I was able to, um, you know, hopefully bring like shine a light on some cases. I know there's like a really big like missing person pod um youtuber and i forget his name now but he actually featured one of my stories um where i did the in an interview with a mother of a missing boy um and he had some nice things to say about me so that was kind of cool um but yeah overall it's one of those things that i think also because i have my own children now i feel like maybe the topic might be a little too heavy for me so i'll probably not go that direction again but Sometimes I do think, I used to think about like doing something in addition to like what I'm doing now on this channel, um, which is like, you know, making these kind of making videos, although I really enjoy them. I sometimes wonder like, would people like to see content that has some other element to it? And I used to think about like storytelling or reading public domain stories or things like that, um, you know, while I'm working. So I thought about also just making videos that were, you know, specifically about um, a story and I would like, you know, maybe cut out paper creatures to kind of animate them myself. Like, you know, say we're telling like, you know, what's a, what's a good example? Well, maybe Alice in Wonderland, like a good story that's now public domain. So like maybe I would have paper cutouts of the characters and I'd be kind of manipulating them, moving them around to make like an interesting, um, storytelling experience. But then also I thought about that and it's actually like a really huge workload it's a lot of work and also it's a lot of editing if you make mistakes while you're reading because I think I'd be a huge perfectionist if I were trying to do something like that I think you know if I'm going to decide to take on a literary kind of objective then I'm going to try to make it a, a good effort at that so I don't know I always want to do different things but then I'm also challenged with like having a super busy life already and I'm trying not to put too much on myself at the same time um yeah but yeah I think a lot of people you know we put a lot of effort into things that we actually also aren't making any money doing so it's hard nowadays like I think that the um the pandemic made a lot of people unfortunately also like super rich Hollywood people become like youtubers and podcasters so even they are cutting into any income potential that like creators and small producers are trying to tap into like now you're you know <laughs> you're going up against like you know Hollywood people who have a lot of resources but actually a lot of them I think make very terrible YouTube videos which is really interesting <laughs> like they're always like poorly lit badly mic'd um you know just weird kind of but I guess that you know people who work as actors and actresses don't actually do any of that technical stuff so in some ways it's understandable I think some people do, do a nice job of it and it was nice to hear especially from people like when everything first started and we were all stuck at home all the time I loved the musicians who were doing like concerts at home and you know there was so so much fun like I, I really enjoyed one thing I really enjoyed were all the kitchen parties that were getting um put online typically through Facebook at the time like there there was like a Nova Scotia or Maritimes like kitchen party group that I was a part of that I just really really loved the home concerts so hearing like you know old kind of Maritimes songs being sung and that kind of thing not professionals just people at home it was a nice way to connect especially on like a Facebook live where you could like live kind of chat with them and enjoy the whole experience so if I didn't explain yet I think I explained in the beginning what I'm doing today so I'm cutting out these bird heads that I um I cut from a vintage 
bird book and I want to make some anthropomorphic birds. Anthropomorphic is the um, theme today for Mab's Halloween. So I'm just going to make a few of those. And then I need to work on my October Daily for Pink Oddbirds. Um, I have an idea for it. The theme for it today is to depict a bunch of, is it troll? No, not trolls. Um, goblins in the moonlight. So I have an idea there for the collage that I want to create. been a very busy week. My in-laws went home yesterday, well, last night. They always leave like very early hours of the morning, I guess, because it's a long drive and my father-in-law likes to get home before noon hour, so they left in the middle of the night. But we had a nice visit and that was good. And they didn't need to repeat COVID tests, thankfully, going back to the U.S., which is nice. Because that, that was a really challenging thing, getting them into Canada. They had to have their negative COVID test within 72 hours of crossing the border, along with, like, their vaccine passport and, um, you know, their, I guess their ID, obviously. So yeah, it, it was hard because most of the labs pretty much around the world, I imagine, are just running testing constantly because testing is a qualifier for a lot of people to do a lot of different things and um, including like daily things. Like some people have to have these tests for their jobs and that kind of thing. And they don't accept the rapid test at the Canadian border. They only accept like the... Um, more, I guess, detailed tests. Cause I guess like the rapid test, the problem with it is that you can get a, a false positive. So they, they don't use those. And the only problem is the other one takes like where they got theirs done was a more aggressive place that would allow travelers. Cause a lot of labs aren't actually allowing travelers cause they can't commit to 72 hours return of results. But the one that they went to, um, they said like yeah we should have it in two to three days but then I ended up logging in and it was two to seven days and so we decided that they would just come and they would drive and drive and then basically if excuse me it all went wrong oh yawning um they would have to like get a hotel and then we'd try again and it would just be this this whole thing but thankfully that didn't happen and um they got here and everything was okay I got the results in like at like 6 a.m. the next day and so we were lucky that way <clears throat> now I have all of these these are like um, collages like of scraps that I cut up a long time ago and I'm wondering if some of them could work as backgrounds for this kind of a project so if I were to try to um you know that's too complicated yeah, these might be too complicated. And some of these might actually not work at all for anything. I've got to go through them again. These were kind of <clears throat> on a whim. Let's see if we have any that would be useful here. Something like that could be a little better. But then again, I still don't know because I might not want that kind of a background. And then I also have to work out like how to handle the neck because see the width is a lot different so I'll probably put some ribbon yeah I don't think collages will work they're too complicated in the background we'll come back to that another day with those um I'm almost thinking you know I've really been liking working just simple with book pages and maybe some cut out flowers or like other bird friends in the background so let's go back to this and I need like um I was thinking a toadstool mushroom to put under her would be really great so let's see if I have one 
I need a big mushroom. <clears throat> Which is another thing I need to fussy cut, like mushrooms. I need to print some mushrooms and fussy cut them. So I have smaller ones, but I don't think any of them are big enough for this. Yeah, like that's too small. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Let me grab my mushroom book. I have a mushroom book over here somewhere. There we go. And if I could find a bigger mushroom that looks like the kind that like a fairy would want to sit on. This one. Perfect. Okay, let's get that out of there without tearing it. See, this is why it's so important as like a journal maker or a paper artist to have lots of stuff in your stash because you need this random kind of stuff. watching also Ann Brooks latest video for week 41 of 52 tags Hannah made and this week <clears throat> it's going to be like a very bullion heavy bullion stitch heavy project which I'm not that excited about I'll be honest I, I don't enjoy doing the bullion stitch very much but it was funny to hear her because she's like some of you aren't gonna like me anymore because we're doing this but please bear with me and and it's funny I'm glad I'm not the only one who doesn't enjoy it because I kind of feel bad but I definitely don't really enjoy it <laughs> now I just want her to be kind of perched on the edge of this mushroom so we don't lose the the mushroom then we need the waist and then I gotta figure out what head goes best. I was kind of thinking this white goose head. I really like the white goose head and it would be like this and then maybe some ribbon but that might be kind of tall. This might be very tall. I'm trying to think about how to make the whole thing look a little less tall. Put the bodice here then what if we use this little duck? Well, that doesn't match the body. Oh, this one might be good. Okay, I like this one actually. Okay, so this one might be good. And um, I'm also thinking of changing the direction of the mushroom. Yeah, I'm gonna cut this end off because it's kind of messing up my, my brain a little here. And I'm almost thinking that the background of book page is too complex too. I might need something just a little bit more plain. Unless I were to like ink it up a little. Um, and I need some lace because we're gonna make like a collar at the neck level. <clears throat> Not that one. So I think what I'll do is I will try to trim the neck a little closer to what her size of her neck is, then attach them there. This is all very experimental at this stage. This is too big. I have like, I don't know if a piece of this may also be cool. Let me just cut a piece off and see. Like a little. Could 
come here. There we go. Oh, it's so hard to cut through sequins. What if it was something kind of like this? Yes, that will work. Okay. So that's our piece of fabric. Now I need a better background for this. That's not going to work. Um, <clears throat> I have this book called Portraits of a Marsh. And it's got a lot of nature kind of watercolor scenes in it. So let me just push these over here move our little collage over here <clears throat> portrait of a living marsh this could even kind of be cool maybe because it's not too wild Get an idea here how this would look. Sorry, this is a little bit tricky to keep everything in place. Yeah, I like that. Okay. The other option is this, but no, we can't have them sitting in a in a boat. Maybe a mushroom would be growing here though. Let's see. Let's just try both options and see how it looks. Because this could be on the shoreline too, right? Hmm. That's a tough choice. Ugh. <laughs> Why did I try a second option? All right, I can't decide. This is tough. So we have this, and then we have this. I think I might just go with the first one. I'm going to go with the first one. hardest thing about these books that have two-sided pages you're sort of like oh, what should I do <laughs> okay I can go to my scraps the glue I'll glue the mushroom down here and then the torso and legs and I wanted oops too much glue there. I wanted the legs to kind of go a bit in behind the mushroom so there's a little dimension to how she's sitting. Okay. And the chest and abdomen. Which would be 
kind of teetering like this a little bit. And then the head of the bird. gunk remover my glue gunk remover here there we go I love this eraser it just gets rid of all the gluey gunk whenever you have gluey gunk okay okay there we go now the inking is a little more normal okay then we gotta get the Fabri-Tac glue have to refill this bottle. Sorry if it's a little bit slow. <sighs> okay. Then the collar. Okay, I just want to back it with some paper here. Oops. Sorry, I'm just getting all this glue off my hand. Sorry if my fingernails look terrible. I was ch um, doing black walnut dyeing this morning without gloves on because <laughs> I didn't have my gloves upstairs and I didn't want to run downstairs because my son, he's going through a little bit of a clingy stage right now where he doesn't like it so much when I leave the room and I didn't want to lug him down to the studio <laughs> to get gloves. So because it's totally safe for your hands although it does do a bit of staining around your fingernails um i just went for it speaking of dyed paper um i will be doing some more batches of um, hand dyed papers for the shop soon um i know it's like been very low i'm gonna add some more soon though Ink around the edges here. Okay. Okay, so we have completed this one. This is the anthropomorphic work for today. Um, I'm probably going to make a few more of these today, but I'm probably first going to work on the, um, the goblins for the other October daily. So I will get on that. And thank you so much for hanging out with me and getting caught up on October dailies and doing a little bit of work. Always fun. So I will be back soon with another video on something. <laughs> so have a great day. All of my information is down below in the description box. If you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love it if you did. All right. Bye for now. Bye.